In today's lesson, we're going to discuss comparing and contrasting when reading. When we compare and contrast, we try to establish the relationship uh, between two or more um, items, concepts, or things. And so this is all part of our reading comprehension skills. We're trying to further advance our ability to read something and critically understand it at both a literal comprehension level and an inferential comprehension level. And so when we do compare and contrast, we're engaging both literal and inferential comprehension skills. So what does it mean to compare and contrast? Well, one component of exercising good reading comprehension is being able to read a passage and compare and contrast its information, right? We just mentioned that. So comparing is when we identify what is the similar, what is similar or shared. What's the same between two or more concepts? All right, so compare means what's the same, what's shared. Contrast, on the other hand, is when we identify what is different between two or more concepts, okay? So compare is same, contrast is different. You're trying to figure out what makes um, this item, this topic, this concept unique? What sets it apart from the other one? And so in this picture here at the bottom left-hand corner, you can see that we're comparing and, comparing and contrasting lions and tigers. And so, um, we're trying to show how they're alike and how they're different. So those outer circles are going to be the contrast circles where we identify what is unique and different um, about lions and what is unique and different about tigers. And then where the two so circles overlap, uh, we'll go over this in the next slide. It's called a Venn diagram, by the way, this um, circular structure here. Where the two circles overlap is where lions and tigers or whatever two concepts you're comparing it's what they share. It's what is similar, shared or the same between them, right? And so in this case, I would say lions and tigers are both large feral cats, right? They are predatory cats. Um, if I was going to contrast lions and tigers, I would say tigers have stripes and lions have a large furry mane um, around their face because that's something that's unique and different. Uh, and I know that because I can look at a lion and a tiger and I can see those differences, right? So like I said, this um, little picture here, this uh, diagram, it's called a Venn diagram. And we use it a lot when we're comparing and contrasting because it provides a nice visual that um, helps us really just, you know, provide structure to um, comparing two different things, all right? So the outer part of the circle right here and right here, these are contrast, what's different. In the middle where they overlap, it's what's the same, what is shared. And then to the right side, we have a word bank that has some words that indicate to us when we're going to compare, tell what is the same, and when we're going to contrast, tell what is different. So for compare, it's gonna be words like both, similar, in common, in comparison to. For contrast, unalike, difference, on the other hand, however. And so just to reiterate, because it's really easy to get these things mixed up, compare means to tell what is alike or shared. When we compare, we want to look for words that indicate a shared characteristic or other aspect between two or more things. And so in this picture right here to the bottom left, you see it says compare. Uh, a whale and a mouse are very different, um, very different creatures, but they are both animals. So what do they share? They share the fact that they are both animals, okay? And so just as before, here are some words that indicate when I'm going to compare or tell what is alike, what is shared. So both alike, in common, similarly, also, as well as same, in comparison to. We also need to read carefully and pay attention to the text. So um, the two examples I've just given you are great because they're visual examples, but when we're reading, there aren't always visuals. And so we have to make sure that we are reading the passage, that we are really taking information in, and that we are mentally setting apart okay so what what two items are being compared or contrasted what makes item a unique what makes item b unique 
What do items A and B share? How can I compare them? And on the other hand, contrast means to tell what is different or unique. When we contrast, we want to look for words that indicate uniqueness or a difference between two or more things. So the previous example, I had a will and a mouse. They're both animals, but what makes them different? How can I contrast them? Well, you might notice a whale is big and a mouse is small, okay? And so whales are the largest mammals, and I wouldn't say mice are the smallest mammals, but they're pretty small in comparison to a mouse. Here are some words that indicate when we are going to contrast or tell what is different. However, although, differ, unalike, on the other hand, while, but, in contrast to. And so when you're reading, I want you to pay full attention to the text. When you see words like this, they mark a change. They mark a turn. Um, I might have been talking about how whales and mice are both mammals, but once I see the word however, that tells me, oh, something different's coming up. I might just be learning what's different about a, a whale or what's different about a mouse or whatever topic you're reading about. So let's look at these examples, all right? So here's a passage. Thankfully, it has pictures. Um, this isn't gonna happen every time. And so we're gonna compare and underline the similarities in blue, and then we'll contrast and underline the differences in red. So I'll read the passage aloud and then we'll do that. So Sam and Buster is the title. Sam is a small dog. He is brown with white spots. He also has small ears and a wet black nose. Sam has a blue collar with a red dog tag. He likes to run in the yard. Sam also likes to hide his toys and chew bones. Sam knows lots of tricks. He can sit, run, and roll over. He is a happy dog and loves to wag his tail. Buster is a large dog. He is brown with white spots. Buster has big ears. His nose is wet and black. Buster has a green collar with an orange dog tag. Buster can run fast, but he does not know a lot of tricks. He only knows how to sit. Buster is a happy dog who loves to chew bones. So right away in the first sentences of each paragraph, I see some differences, things that I can contrast, okay? So it says Sam is a small dog and Buster is a large dog. So small and large are um, opposite concepts. And so those are differences between Sam and Buster. I would underline those first two sentences in red. Let's keep reading to find some other differences or similarities. All right, so if it's underlined in blue, it's a similarity. We're comparing Sam and Buster now. So Sam has what, brown and white spots. What does Buster have? You're right, he also has brown and white spots. So they share those things. If I'm looking at a Venn diagram, that, that area would overlap. That'd be something that Sam and Buster have in common. All right, I didn't underline every single sentence in this passage. I just wanted to find um, at least three differences and similarities. All right, so Sam has small ears. What size are Buster's ears? You're right, Buster's ears are large. Small and large, again, or small and big rather, are opposite concepts. We are contrasting, we're telling what's different. So I underline that in red according to the directions. All right, it says, Sam is a happy dog. It's underlined in blue, which means that this is a similarity. This is something Sam and Buster both share. They are both happy dogs. So, as you noticed, when you're reading, you'll find lots of things, uh, lots of neat little characteristics about concepts. And so it helps to make a Venn diagram. Uh, I would label one side Sam and the other Buster, and I would just go through and write things down about them. Sam is small dog. He has white and brown spots. He has small ears. And then I would go through and write um, the key characteristics of Buster on the other side. And then I would look and see, okay, what two things or what what um, what things rather do these two dogs have in common? And those things I would cross out on their outer circles and right in the middle, okay? And so sometimes it helps to just kind of brainstorm as you go and to, to go through the process step by step. 